I don't know about you, but one of the things I've been trying very hard to avoid during the last 12 months of lockdown is snacking. But as always, I am prepared to make certain sacrifices in the pursuit of scientific knowledge. So I've been forced to buy this bag of crisps or chips to you folks in America in order to demonstrate a point. You might have noticed that the bags always seem to contain more air than food, which is something I find quite irritating. But the air inside the bag isn't ambient air, it's pure nitrogen pumped into the packaging during the manufacturing process. And that nitrogen is separated from the air around us by a cryogenic cooling process that was invented by these two characters way back in 1883. Once it's in liquid form, the nitrogen gas can be transported quite easily in insulated cylinders all over the world. And nowadays, as well as being a major component of agricultural fertilizer, it's also used by pretty much all the major food processing companies in their production facilities because it's an inert gas that can keep the food inside the bag fresher for longer. So cryogenic air cooling is already a widely used and extremely well established technology. In the last 10 years or so though, as renewable power sources have become much more prevalent on our electricity grids, that industry has started to seriously consider cryogenic air as an energy storage medium. A grid scale version of this so-called liquid air process already exists, run by a company called Highview Power. And now a Florida-based company called Cryomatics has developed a portable system that could bring the benefits of liquid air energy storage to the rapidly growing and potentially enormous market for electric commercial fleet vehicles. Hello and welcome to Just Have a Think. The benefits of cryogenically cooling air into a liquid were recognised by industrialists pretty much straight away and it's now what they call a mature technology. It's one of those processes that runs constantly in the background at vast industrial scale all over the world. You might be forgiven for thinking that air is mostly oxygen, after all that's why we breathe it in to keep ourselves alive. But in fact Oxygen is only about 21% of the air we breathe. Nitrogen makes up about 78%. Essentially, the ambient air from the surrounding atmosphere is drawn into a liquefier where it's chilled and compressed. As the air is being liquefied at those very cold temperatures, most of the impurities and contaminants are filtered out. And once it's been compressed and chilled, the air becomes a liquid 700 times denser than the atmospheric air we breathe. It emerges from the process at about 15 times atmospheric pressure and is then channeled either into large insulated storage vessels in grid scale applications or portable cylinders to be transported, a bit like industrial versions of a thermos flask. Then when you need the energy back, you release the liquid from the storage container so that it can be rapidly warmed by the ambient air to produce a very high pressure stream of gas that can then be passed across a turbine to generate electrical power. It's a remarkably efficient process and makes a lot of sense at the large grid scale that Highview Power operate at. Cryomatics don't actually do the cryogenic cooling of the air, they leave that to the industry incumbents. What they have created and patented though is a high speed liquid air or liquid nitrogen expander about the size of an electric drill but with some very smart engineering that improves its efficiency up to levels similar to its much larger cousin. Potentially, there are many applications for a device like this, but cryomatics are primarily focused on the benefits of employing it as a range extender to electric commercial vehicles, particularly urban delivery vehicles. It works a little bit like a jet engine, but without any fossil fuels or combustion. Fundamentally, what the process requires is thermal energy to convert the liquid back into a vapour. It also needs thermal energy to ensure that the gas expands as close to isothermally as possible. We looked at isothermal and adiabatic gas expansion in a video a couple of weeks ago and you can click up there somewhere to jump back to that one. The cryomatics expander 
gets the energy it needs in a number of ways. Firstly, ambient air is drawn in at one end of the expander. Some of that air is passed across a compressor, which makes it hot. The rest of the air bypasses the compressor, and we'll come back to why that is in a moment. Secondly, heat is harvested from the regenerative braking system of the electric vehicle, and from otherwise wasted heat from the vehicle's system components. That energy goes into a heat transfer fluid, which is essentially a carefully calibrated mix of water and glycol. The heat transfer fluid is injected into the chamber at this same expansion stage as the liquid air to maintain those near isothermal levels of expansion. What you've got here is a fancy version of a heat exchanger. And in fact, there are older designs for liquid air expanders that are also just fancy heat exchangers. The difference in this design is that rather than have the airflow around the outside of the chamber, it's injected directly inside the chamber via the compressor at the front and from the heat transfer fluid injectors in the middle. I know you folks in cold and northern climes might point out that a heat exchanger won't work so well in freezing cold air, but the arithmetic for that is done using the Kelvin scale, not Celsius or Fahrenheit. The liquid air is at just 77 Kelvin, and once the ambient air has been through the compressor and been combined with the heat transfer fluid, you get an average temperature of that of about 300 Kelvin. And if we delve very briefly into something called the Carnot cycle, it shows us that the efficiency of heat exchange is governed by the temperature difference in Kelvin. In this case, it's 1 minus 77 over 300, which works out at 74% efficiency, which is not bad. The crucial advantage of setting up the device as an internal heat exchanger instead of an external heat exchanger is that now you've not only got high temperature fluid acting on the liquid air, but you've also added the mass of that fluid to the overall mass flow rate going across the final turbine producing electricity. And of course that ramps up the efficiency of the system very significantly. So why not shove 100% of the ambient air across that compressor at the front then? Well, that's a very good question and one that I put directly to Cryomatic's founder, Mark Kahn, in a recent Zoom chat. Mark explained that high-speed expanders have a specific operating RPM window, which is governed by the velocity of the airflow across it. If you get the airflow velocity wrong, the expander simply stops rotating. That's similar to what happens when an airplane engine stalls. So to maintain that minimum velocity, some of the ambient air has to be diverted around the compressor instead of through it. The exact ratio is something that's been an important element of the development work and is a proprietary detail of the patented design. You might also be thinking to yourself, what's the point of using energy from the regenerative braking system when most electric vehicles already use that energy to recharge the lithium ion batteries? Surely we're just robbing Peter to pay Paul here. And that's another good question, which I also posed to Mark Cam. Mark pointed out that most battery packs for EVs have the regen energy capped to a certain percentage in order to preserve the life of the battery cells. As the mass of the vehicle increases, that percentage gets reduced more and more in order to protect the pack. Any excess unwanted energy is just dissipated into the air and wasted. And it's this excess energy that the cryomatic system captures in its heat transfer fluid. And that means as much as 90% of the potential energy available from regenerative braking is captured compared to about 50% in a normal EV. Commercial vehicles, especially urban delivery vehicles and buses, have a very heavy stop and go duty cycle. And that means regen braking is being employed a great deal of the time. So the more of that energy you can recoup and use, the more efficient your vehicle is and the longer its range will be each day. The Cryomatics expander also recovers thermal energy from the electrical generator itself and the electronics that power the system. In some cases, they'll even be able to incorporate the thermal inputs and outputs of the cabin air conditioning system as well. When the AC system is cooling, the heat is captured and used in the expander. And when the AC system is heating, 
the expander can use thermal energy from the regen braking to assist the AC heat pump. Liquid air, or more specifically liquid nitrogen, has a potential energy of just over 200 watt hours per kilogram. After allowing for the Carnot efficiency losses and other system losses, the cryomatic expander achieves something in the region of 125 watt hours per kilogram. To put that in perspective, that's about the same output as the battery pack on the 2021 Audi e-tron electric vehicle. Cryomatics have submitted fully costed documentation to two different government agencies for review and they're awaiting the results of those assessments. Right now, even in these very early stages with no economy of scale on the costs of components and tooling, the system works out at slightly more expensive than diesel in terms of cost per unit of energy delivered. But of course, as economies of scale kick in, those costs will reduce quite significantly. A test series of last mile electric delivery vehicles equipped with the prototype 20 kilowatt liquid nitrogen powered range extender will be on the road in Florida this year to collect real world data. A slightly smaller 10 kilowatt model is also being developed for use in electric forklift trucks. The plan for 2022 is to test a 30 kilowatt liquid air expander in class three delivery vehicles, which are those FedEx or UPS style box vans we're all familiar with. As with all these startup initiatives, there is of course a long way to go on the road to full production and economic scaling. But if it is successful, then the Cryomatics Expander will offer one more option to improve efficiency for fleet operators and drive down the all important cost per mile that can mean the difference between profit and loss for some of those companies. In the longer term, extenders of between 50 and more than 120 kilowatts are planned to cater for larger electric delivery vehicles, plus electric taxis and buses and agricultural vehicles like electric tractors. And there are potentially other applications as well. For example, mobile chargers and generators, potentially replacing the existing diesel burning models currently in existence all over the world. And that would be one more step towards the global decarbonisation we so desperately need. If you've got views on the potential of this technology, then jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there. That's it for this week though. Thanks as always to the amazing folks who support this channel via Patreon and help me keep the video content independent and ad free. You can get involved in all that and get the opportunity to exchange ideas and information with others, plus watch exclusive monthly news updates from me and have your say on future programs in monthly content polls by visiting www.patreon.com forward slash just have a think. And you can hugely support the channel absolutely for free by subscribing and hitting that like button and notification bell. It's dead easy to do all that. You just need to click down there or on that icon there. As always, thanks very much for watching. Have a great week and remember, to just have a think. See you next week.